This week in our School Matters series, we are focusing on the price of college admission. Getting accepted into a dream school based on academic excellence requires a lot of dedication, hard work, and sacrifice, too. And only a small number of students, it seems, are willing to endure that. We met four students at Miami's G. Holmes Braddock Senior High School. They shared the challenges of reaching the highest levels of higher education. Applying to a college, everything that you do from basically eighth grade until senior year is just leading up to like that moment. They expected to have a perfect GPA. They expected to be president like of every club there is in school. We're still kind of trying to understand who we are but then the schools want, want answers now. I feel a lot of pressure in the terms of how many things I have to participate in and be a part of. National Honor Society, then we have Science National Honor Society, then I got into National Social Studies Honor Society, also known as Rho Kappa. I started freshman year doing Future Business Leaders of America, FBLA. Then I'm in Math Honor Society, which is Mu Alpha Theta. I also volunteer for a hospital, Nicholas Children's Hospital. The amount of free time I have is very limited, so I would say in a day I have one hour to 30 minutes of free time and that time includes eating food and also taking quick little naps here and there. You go to lunch which is the only bit 30 minutes of your day usually because that's when you see all your friends. It's not easy to find a balance sometimes but you make do over time. This definitely intrudes on the fact that I'm 16 and I should be having fun and going out with my friends. I want to do all these things. I haven't gone to the beach in four years and I live in Miami. The biggest fear is like disappointing my peers around me because if I don't make it into college, what would society think of me? I would be like kind of an outcast in a way. It definitely feels worth it because I'm looking at the long term. I'll be stressed now to later be relaxed and to have fun and to be able to experience a good life later. What I know is that you need to be true to yourself. You need to have integrity. You need to have confidence in, in who you are. And wherever you're going to end up, you're going to do great no matter what. Psychologist Lisa DeMora is a CBS News contributor and an expert in child development. She's the author of a new book called Under Pressure, Confronting the Epidemic of Stress and Anxiety in Girls. Lisa, good morning. We just heard all those students talk about a lot of the pressures that they had, but at the same time, they seem to put it in perspective that working hard now will pay off later. What's good stress versus bad stress? Well, so it is true that working hard does expand capacities. You know, high schoolers gain tremendous intellectual strength, tremendous capability over the course of high school. We do want to be careful about the assumption, though, that going to a good college means that you're going to have a good adult life. Mm -hmm. We don't actually have those data. When we look at adult well-being, it turns out that economic success, professional success are not that strongly correlated with being a happy adult. Um, instead, the things that really matter in adulthood are having good relationships, doing work you find meaningful, um, and feeling that you're gaining skills. So we want to try to keep that balance in there about really what the long-term targets are. What do you hear these students saying and the students that you talk to? Well, so what I hear them saying and the kids that I take care of too, one of the things I hear in this kind of pretty, you know, intense admissions climate is that teenagers will say to me, you can have a social life, you can get sleep, or you can get your schoolwork done, but you can't have all three. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, doesn't seem like what we want for our high schoolers. So what's the role for parents in all of this? Obviously, they want their kids to get into good schools. They're the ones who are disciplining them and telling them to go do their homework and prepare for admissions and essays. But on the other hand, they don't want to see them too stressed. Right, so parents are sort of caught in the crossfire here because the college admissions situation has created a lot of pressure the bar is very high. Of course, parents are going to want their child to have every opportunity available. And yet in the day to day, they're watching a kid who's not getting enough sleep, who's feeling pretty stressed. So there's two things parents can do. One, again, is to kind of keep their eye on the long term target to really be mindful that going to Harvard doesn't mean you're going to have a good life. Right. In fact, you could go to Harvard and be quite miserable later in life, or you can go to a school that isn't a name brand college and go on to live a very fulfilled life to sort of keep putting that idea forward. The other thing I want parents to do is to not confuse college admission with college readiness. Mm -hmm. Those are two very different things. To being able to, college admission is really about your academic credentials. Readiness is, can you maintain relationships? Do you know how to take care of yourself? Are you sufficiently mature to handle the independence of college? And I worry that sometimes with so much stress on the academics, it's easy to lose sight of other aspects of growth that are really necessary for college success. Expand on that. What are some of those aspects of growth and maturity? 
For me, the main question is whether or not a young person sees their self-care as their responsibility. So mm. yes. interesting, yeah. And, and not something you that should say waiting. that again. I know. Okay. Say yeah. it one Let more me time. say this one yeah. more time. You should say that again. The main question is whether they see their self care as their responsibility. And explain what self care is. Self care, getting themselves to bed on time, getting themselves out of bed. If washing going, their clothes. Washing their clothes. If they're going to parties, managing their own safety, not equating, you know, am I going to get caught with good decision making? Don't worry about getting caught. Worry about could you get hurt, mm -hmm. right? That's the kind of thinking I want it's in young so people. So interesting, because you're right. We're concentrated on getting them into schools and instead of building them as as independent future adults. Yes. How can we foster independence in themselves? Yes. And what I will say is, I think the kids are actually stuck in the middle too, because the academic expectations are so high mm -hmm. that high school can tip into something where all they're doing is homework and there's not time to build out these yeah. other aspects. So where do, you play, where do we get the thing that? Because shouldn't you encourage your kids to work hard to get into a good school? At what point does it take a turn that this is not the right way to go? I think, you know, it's one of those things that you're in the weeds as a parent, yes. and it's very hard to not kind of get lost in that. Yes. But what we want to be mindful of is, are we raising good college applicants or are we raising whole people? Uh. And our job as parents is actually to raise whole people who can maintain relationships, take care of themselves, and also do work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. important to find the school that's right for you. It's yeah. more about fit yeah. than about brand. Yes. I could talk to you for half an hour. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's true. I know. It's really it's interesting. Very good information. But in the meantime, people, she has this fabulous That's book, great. which I have read and has lots of good information for both people who have sons and daughters. It's really good under pressure. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome.